G'day guys, welcome back. I'm going to do another kind of, I'm going to call it a graduated pour because I'm going to start with lightest going into darkest. Flip and drag. No silicone. I don't want cells, hopefully. Won't get them. Sometimes you get a few anyway. Now, I'll show you my sunset one I did the other day. Um, it's not, not totally dry yet. It's it's dry around the edges so I can touch the edges but the middle's still wet. So similar sort of thing where I'm going to go from one colour to another but that looks nice doesn't it? Look at that. <laughs> so there's that one. Um, now the colours for today's one, um, and I can't show you the painting because it's, oh, it's packed away somewhere. It was one of my very, very favourite, all-time favourite, still is colour palettes. So I'm going to use the same colours, um, but no cells. Now, I've prepped my one side of the canvas. I always tape the sides, especially if I'm doing the rings, you know. I've told you about this last time. If I do the rings and I only want to tip that way and that way, I don't want the paint to fall off the sides. So I put some tape here, and I'll do this one. I've already done that one. I'll do this one. Just normal masking tape. Tiny bit bigger than your canvas. Now, you want it to be, you want to fold that into about a third, okay? And then just push it down like that so that you've got, now you've got half that's sticky and half that's not, okay? So the sticky side obviously goes onto your side of the canvas like so push that down make sure it's nice and firm that way you've got this side here that's not sticky and that will stop the paint from rushing off the side okay and giving and making those kind of curved areas where you just want it nice and straight right so seven cups today one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, the other thing I'm going to do a little bit differently today is instead of layering the colours, I'm going to go and just do a dirty pour. When I started acrylic pouring, I just did that. I didn't layer colours. I just poured the colour in, poured the next one in, and so on and so on. So I'm going to do that. I've got two whites. And then I've got like a beige colour, the burnt umber. I made this myself. It's just burnt umber, a little bit of burnt umber, and the rest of it's white. So that's those. And then I've got turquoise. I've left them pretty thick. Same recipe as I use for my ring pours. 70% glue, 30% water. Because I get nice defined rings. If you if you go too thin, your rings are kind of wobbly. Navy blue, it's just phthalo blue with a little bit of black and a little bit of green. Because sometimes blues throw purple. And to combat the purple, you put a little bit of green in. So that's that one. And then I've got the teal, which is phthalo blue and probably two parts phthalo blue and one part phthalo green to make it teal. Thinking my blue's just a little bit on the thick side, so I'm just going to add a splash of water. The brown, oh my gosh, the brown I had to add quite a lot of water to. It was really, really thick. I think it's getting old now because I don't do much with the brown. So hopefully I've made them thin enough that I can drag the cup nicely, but not too thin that they're going to sell up because of your densities, okay? That one's a little bit thick too. They looked a bit thin, so I added a bit more paint, but now I've overdone it and they're a bit too thick. 
all right so um yeah 70 percent glue it's the elmer's glue all if you don't have glue all that's okay you can use any white craft glue um i've even used the clear the elmer's clear glue that works as well the school glue works as well school glue is a little bit different consistency but um yeah they're all sim similar you're just gonna have to adjust them now i need some gloves let me get some gloves on and we will get this show on the road okay so what i thought i would do first is put some white in the cups try and get equal amounts of white in all the cups to begin with i did make my white a little bit thicker instead of one to one only because i tend to lose the white if i don't um, i tend to lose it I don't know why it's just one of those colors that doesn't really show up very much doesn't look like a lot of paint does it <laughs> oh gosh so the ones down this end are going to have more white and those ones will have less white but i wanted to start with them all having some white in them yeah i'm really not quite sure how i want to do this i'm just gonna to have to just just go for it and see what happens get all that out okay so i'm just going to as i said i'm just going to do a dirty pour so i'm just going to pour from up high i'm just going to put a little bit in first just to make sure that they've all got some these ones on my right will have more of the dark colors and less of the light colors but i still want them to have a little bit so i've still got a little bit left in there now so i'll just leave that for now um, until i've got all my colors in then i can work out what i want to do and i might not use all the brown because the brown was so thick i had to keep adding water and more water and more water so I've ended up with a bit more paint than I would normally use. Now this is a 30 by 60 centimeter canvas, uh, 12 by 24 inches. So let me go back and, oh no, there's a little bit there. So roughly I know I need about 900 grams of mixed paint for this particular size. and then my teal could have gone with the smaller cups too but um i thought oh they might be a bit full and then i can't, won't be able to flip them properly if they're a bit full so i've gone with the bigger cups but now it looks as if i haven't got very much in there all right now my second cup of white so this is going to have more white in that one and then as we go along there'll be less and less let's make sure that they've all got some and then start adding a little bit more as we go up and hopefully my theory will work on how to do this I don't know <laughs> I'm just winging it and then same with the other colors um, the darker color the darker ones will be more up here and less down there so put a little bit of this one in again but more up this end they'll just all blend nicely together that's the plan anyway hopefully they will um, but yeah if it doesn't work then I'll just um, I'll try again next time a little bit of brown I don't know that I want to put too much brown mm, we'll see now a little bit of turquoise 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 doesn't really matter it's one of those colors that's just kind of neutral so they can all just have a little bit of turquoise 
these two at the top end can have a little bit more. And then the ones on the, the darker side, they'll have more of the darker colours. All right, here we go. So a little bit of the, little bit of the navy, just a touch. And then this one's going to have a bit more. I'll finish you off in there. I don't feel as if I've left enough of the dark blue to go up these ones, these last two. But they haven't got as much white, so hopefully that will be all right. Okay, that's that one done. Now the teal. Lots of teal. And then just a little bit for these ones. Okay. This cup hasn't got much. So what do you reckon? Do you think it's going to work? Do you think my layering is going to work? Well, my graduated. Is that a good name for it? Graduated pour? Or should we call it something else? Because it's not always going to be, you know, lightest to darkest. Like the sunset wasn't lightest to darkest. It was, well, it kind of was, but in the purples down to the orange and then the dark blues down to the light blue. So I guess it was still graduated. Um, I've got a little bit of the chocolate left. I'm going to put a little bit in, just on all of them, just to use it up. Hopefully it won't be too brown. All right, there we go. Won't scrape it out. That'll be enough. Hope that'll work. Okay, here we go. Let's flip these babies over. I did measure, I put all my cups upside down first to make sure that I would fit seven cups <laughs> because when I did the um, the same kind of pour the other day, I had eight cups, they were smaller and it, they the paint fell off the sides. So I thought, oh gosh, don't do that again. Make sure it's gonna fit. All right, now I'm just gonna have to wait for a minute just for that paint to run down because it's, you know, I only used half a cup, so. I'm just going to put you on pause just for 30 seconds while we wait for that paint to run down. Right, that's a quick 30 seconds. Now, also, I find that I can flip better with the bigger cups. Now, I don't hold them like this. I think if you flip like that, if you hold it like that, it just basically falls over and you only get like half a sort of blob of paint. I like to hold it like this and I can actually pull it all the way down. That's what I'm going to try and do anyway, pull it all the way down. But it depends on the thickness of your paint. If it's not very thick, it's not going to go very far either. So here we go. Wish me luck. All right, so now he came to about there. I'm going to put this back. Oops, I don't want it to drip though. Put some of this back. I want to try and keep it in its like stripes. I'm just going to keep that cup there. All right, I'll see if I can go faster with the next one. If you go faster, you're going to end up traveling further down. Like that. That's a better one. Much better. You know the problem with having oh, the problem is having one all the way down and a half or three quarters, that paint falls off before that's had a chance to run down. So you've got to kind of make try and make them all the same, which is tricky to do. I'm gonna put these empty cups at the top. Right, here we go. Again, that one was a little bit different.
oh my gosh, it's getting worse as I'm going along. If you make them all like that, they all tip at the same time. If you make them all like that, they all tip at the same time. But you got to try not to do half half. All right, I'll come back to that one. I'll leave that like that. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can get this one to travel a little bit further. Nope. Nope. I'm getting worse. Oh, well, that's okay. I probably should have done that one further up and then <laughs> they would have all tipped at the same time. I'm just going to fill in this gap here. See how the tape's preventing that paint from running up, off, which is exactly what you want. I'm just going to try and get some of this paint out along the side here. I've got plenty of paint on the canvas, like it doesn't really matter. Most of it's going to get tipped off anyway. And I don't really like putting extra paint on because it can look a bit stripy. All right, I'm just going to fill those up now. I want to put a little bit of this paint along here if I can get some out. Actually, what's in there is looking dark, so I'm going to leave it. I'm going to put, not going to do any more. Right. I think what I'll do is. Because this is so close, I'll do this side first and I'm just going to do this and wet the canvas just to help that paint flow over. And then I can take the paint all the way back again, stretch it down the other side. Okay, so that's that side done. <gasps> Woohoo! It does look lighter at this end. Not a lot, a little bit. Okay, here we go. Uh, I might get a bit of, might get my little paint capture, my corner capture. Uh, actually, I'm just, um, just going to cut another piece of cardboard. I'm going to cut a piece off here. I'm going to do it over here so I don't get bits of cardboard flying into my painting. But basically, it's all I do for a, a corner catcher or a, a straight edge catcher in this case. Piece of cardboard. See, that's all going over and this hasn't gone over yet. So I just want to, I'm going to hold it there. I just want to stop that paint from flowing over until this side's had a chance to catch up a bit. Sometimes you just have to go for it. <laughs> uh, all right, that's over that side. I'll take that away. Oh, look at that. How pretty does that look? Now, um, I'll, tr I'll turn it around without making a mess, just so that you can see what I'm doing, because now I'm going to go the other way, and I'll tip towards you. Okay, I might use that again. We'll see. I'd have to use it up here actually. But you can see how the these side bits are catching the paint. So it should all just run straight down. So here we go. Now don't go zigzag side to side. We just want it to go straight down. See how that's already gone off the side there. So I'm just going to catch some of that. Stop it from going any further. While we wait for the other colours to come down. I'm just going to push that back a bit. And again, we're just going to have to just wait very patiently until those other colours can, these can have a chance to run down. I'm just going to let's put the weight of the paint back again so it doesn't all run down. I'm just going to help this 
by wetting the canvas. It's almost there. I just didn't do a very good job of dragging. So if my paint was a little bit thinner, it would have dragged better. Now this here, this brown, how it's doing that, I don't, I don't like that. So I think what I'll do is I'll just take that away and I'm going to let it run down and that piece there should straighten out. All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. No, it's all running. All right, I'm just going to have to go for it. So you just have to go for it. All right, there we go, and back. It's done. I know we lose a lot of paint, but it's just part of part of the process. Wow, look at that! Oh my gosh, I could have done with a little bit more light down here, I guess. A little bit more white. Maybe I'll get three cups of white next time, because I love that. All right, now what we're going to do is just peel this. I'll just stick my finger in it. Gosh. No, it's all right. I won't do it. Um, carefully, pull your tape off. And the paint will just flow down the sides. You put this in the bin. Oh, I've got it. And then the same on the other one. Just peel it. Oh, my gloves going in the side again. All right, check that out. Oh, look at the state of me. Right, oh, now there's some edges that need. Oops, I'm not in my little frame there. Now there's some edges that need fixing up. So it's a pity I've got some white there. I don't really like that white there. I wonder if I can get a little bit of dark paint out of one of my cups. <laughs> Let's see if I can get a little bit of dark paint out of this one. Probably won't be able to probably will ruin it. Mm, didn't really help, did it? No, this is white underneath it. Where can I get some dark? Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm just being picky, aren't I? Being picky. Mm. No, they're all they're all pulling some white from the bottom. That's because I had white in the bottom of all the cups. That's why. All right. What I'm, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some of this paint and I'm just going to cover my sides. It doesn't matter. I don't think it really matters if it's not an exact match. What I did when I did my sunset one, I actually kept a little bit of paint back of my two side colours. Like I should have kept some dark blue and then maybe some of the really light aqua just to um, you know, pop on the corners and the sides, but I didn't keep any this time, I forgot. I forgot it. Run that little pellet knife underneath, catch any drips. I do want to get a little bit dark blue and just pop it over that there, if I can find any. Mm. There's some dark blue. I wonder if you'll do. No, you're more of a teal. Oh my gosh. All right, I'll find some later. Now, this side here needs some of this lighter aqua colour. I'll just pop that on the side like so. So it's good that you've got your leftovers on your puppy piddle pad. <laughs> that you can pick up some light colours and just pop it on the side there so it matches. Actually, I need more of a teal. There we go. 
All right. I'm done. Woohoo. Oh, look, I've stuck my fingers in the canvas on the side there. It's the only thing, like when you're holding it, you know, to tip it. Oh, it's really pretty. It's a lot stripier than I thought. And it's not as graduated colours as I thought. So like, yeah, definitely do three cups of white next time. So I can put a lot of white and then gradually reduce the white as I go down. But let me get these gloves off. I'll take you down for a close-up. And uh, you can see what you think, hey? It's really pretty. I really like it. It's a pity you can't see. Uh, maybe I'll hold it the other way so that you can see the lightest to darkest. So this is the way it would hang. So we've got our kind of beach there. Maybe I could not put brown at the top, like in the dark colours. Not sure. And then we get darker and darker. There's so still a little bit of turquoise in the top there. There's the side. That's it from my side, anyway. Ring light. It's very annoying. Look at these. Look at the side. Isn't it pretty? There's my tripod. It's only just missing the paint. <laughs> oh, anyway, there it is. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And there's it from that side. Have a go at these. Um, like I've got a few little cells in there, little white cells that have popped up. The white being heavier. Um, the other colours. No, I have got a The turquoise was an opaque as well and the white was an opaque. So we've got a few little cells, but it's not too bad. Like, yeah, I can live with that. A little bit more stripy than what I was hoping for. Actually, you know what I might try? I might try with less cups next time because the more cups you have, the more stripes you have. So maybe I can try this with um, five cups and just see what the difference is because I won't get as many stripes with the, with the fewer cups. So let's do that. Let's try again. Um, I want to do a red and black and orange one, so that'll be coming up soon. All right, I'll leave it at that. I'll clean up my mess, go for a coffee. And a cupcake. I made chocolate cupcakes yesterday. Yummo. And um, let me turn that ring light off. Oh, there we go. Did you all see my um, my new drying rack? It's kind of got my drying rack. There's a dog bed down there. Nobody's using the bed. How do you want to use that one instead? Look at Ella. Yes, hello, baby. Hello. She's due to birth next week. Got a bit of a tummy on her. Yes, you have. Can we show everyone your tummy? Oh, Ella. Oh, no, she says, I'm too big to... Bronte, you're in the way. No, okay, we're getting back to looking at the drying rack. Look at that. It's a baby cot or um, crib put on its side. You're having that bed now, um, yeah, and then just these bits of timber. There's my canvases up there, there's my cups. A lot of people have asked to see my studio, like I show it every now and then, but not every single time. There's some paint, some mediums, glues. These plastic drawers are really good for keeping things in. Bits and pieces. Got my sticks. Big sticks. Medium sticks. Moulds. More moulds. I haven't even used those before. More moulds. <laughs> Lots of moulds. Oh my gosh. All kinds of stuff. And then over here... 
got this little set from eBay. It's not a very deep set of shelves. It's really good. So this is all my my pigment powders and pastes and crushed rock and things like that. That's the door out to the laundry. And then I've got another set of drawers here that I just got from Buy Sell Swap. I've got some molds in there. It's hard to open one-handed. Molds. Um, glitter rack. <laughs> Alcohol ink rack. <laughs> For my radio when I'm listening to music when it's just me and I'm not videoing. More paints. Liquitex. These are the tubs that I use for my... I, I pour the two litre bottles into these. And paintings. Oh, there's my air conditioner for when it's like really hot or really cold. Lots of paintings. A little set of table and chairs there when I have a break when I sit and mix resin. Lots of paintings. And then some more paintings. Your board yet? <laughs> Another set of these. These are great. These little um, shelves, I guess, open shelves. I've put things in there to dry. That's my garage door, actually, that I've put insulated foam, like foam panels, in there to keep the heat out. I've got a nice big spotlight there and a ring light there. And that's where I do my videos. Um, these drawers, these drawers are really good too because I've got, I can keep all my resin pieces in there. Like when they're drying, like those nails, <laughs> uh, I can let them sit like that when they're drying. Um, and then once they're fully cured, then I can stack them up in there. But once they, when they're still drying, I just put them in there like that. So, yeah. Lots and lots. What's in these? Oh, wow. And you look in the. Oh, look at that. Look what I found. <laughs> All kinds of things. Oh, there's the crushed velvet. So, yeah. Oh, look. There's my. Um, there's my little YouTube. What's that called? For passing 100,000 subscribers. My play button. I want to do another one of these. This is my inspiration, actually. I'm going to do a, a bling painting. This has got resin over it, but I want to actually do a bling painting with those colours. See, some of your paws, you can actually send them, upload them, and you can make cushions out of them or clothes or whatever you like. So that's those. So all kinds of things. There's a couple of platters. But, yeah, these shelves are really good. My ladder for when I need to reach up high. My turntable my spin paws and then these these tables that I got um, it's just an old dining room table and I got these plastic sheets on a roll and you just have it cut the size you want and then you cover your table and it was $50 the table and then my husband put another shelf underneath it for me you see so I've got storage under the shelf on the shelf and then on the top and then of course I've got this other one over here um, it's just got bits and pieces on it at the moment, but it's got some storage under there as well. So, yeah, lots of storage. And then I've got my PowerPoints under here as well um, with all my heat guns and hair dryers. And I know it looks a bit of a mess, but if I want something, I can just grab it and plug it in up here. So, there we go. That was exhausting. Back to the painting. There we go. Love it. Have a go. Um, if you're not already a member on my Facebook group, please join and put up your paintings there. I'd love to see them. Pouring your heart out. The link is below in the description. And, um, all right, I'm going to go now. <laughs> now that I've shown you around, I'll see you all for the next video. Love you all. Take care. Bye for now.